Right, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Adam, as she said. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to explain what an RDE is and hopefully how it can help you and your team with Magento. This is my first time speaking, so please go a little bit easy on me. A little bit about me. I've spent six plus years working with Magento of all flavors for different sizes of clients from the very small to the large enterprise ones. I'm primarily focused on the back end infrastructure and integrations with third party systems. I'm currently a developer at Zero One, where I love what I do. I do genuinely enjoy Magento development, uh, despite all the flack it's got recently. Because of the experience I've had working with many different clients, it has led me to co founding MDoc, which is an RDE and deployment pipeline for Magento. So, what's the problem? Here I've simplified a very, uh, here's a very simplified DevOps process. Yours will probably be slightly different and contain few or different steps. What I'm trying to highlight is that in general, a lot of pipelines have a common theme. You've got some work. The work then needs to be tested or reviewed. Once the work is tested and reviewed and accepted, it then heads to production. What a lot of the pipelines I've seen don't cover is the process of where and how the work is developed. If they do, it is rarely defined well enough for everyone in the business to use. For example, you might have a Docker Compose YAML file that your developers can use to get a local stack running. That's great, but it does force anyone using it to have some knowledge of Docker or at least Docker installed on their machine. And different OSs obviously have the different issues. If they do hit any issues, it generally has to get raised to another developer eating up time for both you and the developer helping you. I'd also argue that having a knowledge of Docker shouldn't be a requirement to work on Magento. This is where I feel an RDE comes in. So what is an RDE? It's an environment that can run multiple instances of Magento. And by instance, I mean a full replica of a specific Magento site. Each instance is completely isolated from other instances kind of like having multiple staging sites all in one big environment. Each instance is available to everyone. So that might be developers, QA, testing or the client, as well as uh, callbacks from payment gateways. It needs to be accessible via the web. So every bit of testing that you want to do can be done. What makes an RDE different from a staging site is that it's tailored for development. All the files are accessible and editable. There are numerous ways the files can be accessed, such as web-based IDEs, SFTP, NFS, or SSH. It should really feel as much as though it's on your machine as it is. There are no blockers to a developer changing the code or adding debug. Personally, for me, this was the hardest bit to get used to, not having the code on my machine. Each instance has developer tools set up and configured. For example, a MySQL GUI to allow investigation and insights into what data's in the database and what tables there are in the sizes, as well as to be exported if needed. A Redis GUI to allow visibility of cache data. This can be really helpful if you're looking at an issue with you know, block cache or FPC. Kibana to see what's in Elasticsearch and know that Elasticsearch is now required. So being able to actually get hands on and see what's in there can be priceless. Etz debug enabled if desired. A log GUI. Now I know the logs are available through the files, but being able to filter using a GUI, so for just warnings or errors, can really speed up trying to find the root of a problem. As well as CLI tools, such as PESL, that you can be used quickly to create a module skeleton. In addition to this, there are also automated common tasks, maybe uh, changing the deployment mode, setting it from production to developer, enabling, disabling, or flushing cache, toggling template path ins. Now, I know a lot of these actions can be done, but by having a one click solution to them, it's much faster and you get a much more integrated development. You, you don't get stopped all the time by need to put it in dev mode to turn template path ins on, have a flushed cache. You just click it and it puts template path ins on and it's much simpler. Enabling or disabling MySQL login. Enabling, disabling modules, as well as installing or removing them. So that might be from Composer 
or via uh, a zip file. Everything you need to develop or work against an instance is configured every time and set up for you. So you don't, you don't have any blockers, it's always there. The instance creation process has many steps. Uh, here are some of the key points, there are a few more. We can see that someone triggers an instance to be created. This could be anyone in the business or automated based on actions. The infrastructure is then rolled up with all the, all services configured. So Redis, Elasticsearch, Varnish, for example, all configured to talk to the right. The database is then created with the latest data and then configured for this instance. So by configured, I mean the URLs changed and the admin path changed so that it's specific for just this instance. The source control step ensures that a branch is created for this instance from a parent branch that you choose when you create the instance. Composer install is then run to pull in all the needed dependencies. This ensures that regardless of the branch you're on, whether it's ahead or behind of master or main, the correct packages are installed. Magento commands are then run and depending on the options you've selected when you create your instance, it can enable or leave cache off, run setup upgrade and set the deploy mode. So if you want to roll it up in development straight away, you can do. If someone's testing and they just want a complete replication of what's on live, they can just put it straight into prod mode. The process is fully configurable. For example, you might want to change the PHP or MySQL version. You just simply select it when you create your instance or after you've created your instance. You might also want to select a database backup from a month ago if you're looking for an issue that you don't know when it started and you need to see if it was always present. The steps are replayable, allowing you to rerun them when you want. So for example, you might want you might have an install script that you've created for a module and you want to test it again. Just by recreating the database, you're staging a cutover because you're starting from fresh and your module reruns it. So you can you can get a, a cutover done quite quickly and you can do it a lot of times. So you can be confident that when it goes to production, it's going to perform as you expect. Before and after each of the steps, you can inject your own logic. After the database is configured, you might want to set up, I don't know, specific payment accounts in sandbox mode or any other integrations, you might want to point them to a, a test inside. You can also, before, after, or in between your Magento commands, run any needed custom build commands. I know I've seen a few people with different builds that after or before static contents generated, they need to perform some extra steps. Not only can you trigger instance actions by API, you can also be notified when your instance is ready or trigger other actions within your organization based on webhooks. So how does this fit into a, a DevOps pipeline? A developer will spin up an instance and carry out the work, whether it's a bug fix or a feature or an upgrade or whatever it be, they carry out the, in the development on a specific instance to them. It doesn't have to be a single developer, it can be passed between multiple. The key is it's in one place and all developers can get access to it if needed. Once they're happy with it, they can pass it to QA or testing or the client. But because it's in one place, the work doesn't need to be moved anywhere. It can be tested as was. Well, so there's none of this. It works on my machine. Um, it's ready to be tested. Also, if it doesn't pass testing, it hasn't gone anywhere that can be a blocker. So for example, if you were to merge your work onto staging and it failed testing, anything that's on testing on staging could effectively be a blocker for other work, especially if we've done database updates. Once it's been accepted, it merges into staging. And because staging is within the RDE again, it reduces the need for developers. So the merge into staging can be done by a non-dev if required. Once it's signed off uh, in staging, it'll go to production. To ensure that the development instances are as close to production as possible, regular database backups and files that are outside source control. So maybe your static assets and what was exactly in vendor and your generated files, they're all pulled back into the RDE so that when you start up an instance, 
before you've done any development. If it's level with master, it will be identical to production, allowing your testing teams to effectively replicate stuff away from production quickly. So from all that talking and a lot of quick slides, we can see that there's quite a, quite a few things that an RDE can do and is. Some of the key points are it's a local, it's a location or environment away from your machine, but it's tailored towards development. So it's not a hands off environment. It's very much a hands on environment and sh there should be no restriction on any access to it. It's multi user. So it's not just for developers. It's for everyone. It's for the whole team and anyone can use it, especially for development or testing. Or it might even be running automated regression testing. There's no limits on what can be done with it. It supports more than one Magento instance, allowing multiple streams of work to go on at the same time. Again, multiple instances can be quite quite restrictive in that you might think of it in terms of one project. You can have multiple projects within the IDA and they all process, they're configured in one place and you could have five or six clients within there. The instances are recreatable, allowing you to swap and change out components as needed and stage as many cutovers as required. It receives feedback from production. This is the backups and files that are outside of source control to make sure that it is as close to production as possible so there are no issues with data being old. There are loads of tools and GUIs available to aid in development and to speed it up. So something that you might not want to configure every time on your local instance is always there and set up. So you've got everything and it's ready to go. It's integrated into source control and each instance has its own branch so that it, the work is isolated. I know that sounds like a long winded process just for some development and you might be thinking, is it really worth it? Hopefully to highlight some of the benefits, I'd like to walk through a scenario. You've just landed a new client and you've been tasked with creating a new module. You've got your cup of coffee and you sat at your desk. Now what? Before you can even begin, you need to configure a full local environment to perform the work against. I've not done that for a while, so apologies if I've missed any steps, but it'll look something like this. Once you've finally done all that, then you can get to the good bit. You might be able to do it in half that time and arguably it is quicker if, if you've worked on the project before. However, the point is every developer working on the project will also have to undertake this process at some point. Depending on your number of developers and the number of work packages, this can quite quickly add up to a lot of time not spent doing the fun stuff or the development. Sorry, I'm going to something. I've seen this time, this times can vary quite a bit on setup, but on average, I've seen it quoted at around a day for a new client. If you have an RDE to facilitate this process, the time is, the time is just an average, but from my experience, the faster, the better, but even if it is much greater than this, if it's automated, it's something that can be done whilst you're doing something else, even making a coffee or checking emails or finishing off some other development while your instance is being created. It doesn't tie you to setting it up. You can be doing something more productive. In addition to this time saving of the initial setup, there's also some additional benefits. It reduces the learning curve for newer developers. If you get a junior developer on board and you have an RDA, they can be effective on your project from hour one or as soon as the instance is created there is no requirement for them to set up anything or get on board. I think development enough can, I think development can be daunting enough for junior developers without the requirement to set up a full stack locally before they can even start learning Magento. I feel the easier the entry point is for newer developers to get started, the, the better the community will grow and the easier it is for everyone to get involved. And that's, that's what I like to say the community is massive and Making it easier for new people to get on board is just key for me. By using an RDA, once a new client is set up again, everyone benefits from the setup. Nobody needs to have it local. And again, it's not just for developers. 
your testing support can get it. You don't need a developer to go and set up staging so that they can have a look or for a client. It's already there and set up for them. It just reduces developer burden. If you're all working from the, an RDE, it's much easier to know where your backups are. You're not running the risk of having potentially sensitive information on developer machines that's out of date as well and then having to import it. There's no requirement for your machine to be able to run a stack. We've actually had one of our developers use a Chromebook while his was back for him refurbished to do some development. There was almost no downtime for him. No matter what the time it is to create the instance as well, it's a known time. It can be more accurately planned around. This is especially helpful for project managers if they know that rather than there's a, a varying time window before someone can be effective on a project, it allows them to plan it more, much more accurately. It's especially helpful for projects that are smaller and the time constraints are much tighter. You can pass your work between developers. So if you get stuck or you go on holiday, there's no need for the setup to be redone on your from your machine to someone else's. They can just take straight over and carry on with it, or you can look at help somebody else with theirs. It really enables collaboration that I, I did never saw when we were doing local development. Not only can you pass it around in the team, but you can as well enable access for third parties. So it might be a module developer where you've installed their module. It doesn't work, but you can give them access to a specific instance and they can fix the issue you're having for your project. So there's no issue with it might not be right for your project and equally there's no the security is the security risk is reduced because you know what they've got access to they've got access to a single one does it really work the feedback we've had is yes a resounding yes every developer that i've spoken to that has used it initially it's obviously difficult as i said before to get used to not having the files in your machine and not starting with a git clone or whatever you do. Um, I've just picked a few of our key quotes. Regatta have been working with an RDE for over two years. They've managed to double the size of their developer team whilst reducing the internal support. In addition to that, over the past six months, an RDE has enabled Daemon Tweaks to better utilize their own developer team for Magento development, where previously they were struggling to get going on Magento. They were having to hand the majority, if not all of their Magento work to an agency. They're now able to collaborate with an agency on work and they can take some themselves. Zero One has used an RDE exclusively for the past three years for all Magento development. And I can honestly say we wouldn't look back. British Hardwood Tree Nursery have managed to significantly reduce the cost of their M2 migration. So they've worked in collaboration with Zero One. Uh, Richard is a developer himself who works for the company. He's managed to pick the tasks that he feels he's comfortable to do. He does them on his own instance and then passes them to Zero One. If he struggles with any bits, he just again passes it over, but there's no no need for it to be committed. He just has a nice instance that he can work on and it's his site. He can also pass it around inside his team and it's it's really in, increased, reduced the cost and then increased, the, well, sped it up a lot. You, where do you start with an RDE? So there are, there are a couple of options that you can do. Um, you can purchase an off the shelf implementation. The number of this is growing. GitHub have recently offered a code editing uh, feature, which is live with some environment behind it. I'd argue this isn't a full RDE, but does give you some of the benefits. Some hosting companies are now starting to offer dev instances. So hopefully you can take some points from this to see whether it is a true RDE or if it is just like an isolated staging. You don't see the benefits unless the instances are develop, uh, tailored for development. If you do want to build something in-house, you might want to start with an off-the-shelf implementation to see if it does work for your company, what's missing, so you know that if when you do develop it in-house, um, what bits you need to add or change. 
once you've validated that and you do the development in-house, I know it can be quite or it is quite a large undertaking to be implemented. So you might want to do it incrementally. I've highlighted a few of the key steps that should give you a good return on the investment. So if you do the piece of work, you get a good milestone and you will start seeing developer efficiencies and improved performance from development. If you don't have a staging server, I strongly recommend that. Having something that is as close to live as possible that you can access and change code on is much better. No longer do you get the it's on my machine versus the differences of production. The next part after having a staging server, I feel it's the bit I see neglected all too often with like databases being like six months behind production. Make sure it's up to date, sanitized and with sandbox accounts configured. The closer it is to production, the faster you can replicate bugs from, from production and the faster you can find fixes for them. It's not usually a massive undertaking to sort out this feedback of pulling backups from production, putting them into staging and san well, sanitizing the data, putting it in staging and configuring your sandbox details. It's not a big development undertaking, but it does give you quite a big benefit across the team. After you've got that, I definitely suggest looking at being able to recreate the instance at will. So not only does the feedback happen either automatically or on action or schedule, you should be able to choose when you want to do it. So if you've got a bug and you can't replicate on staging, there should be some method of being able to trigger a new process or something that makes it so that staging is in line with production. This means to stop any blockers of it. it's not happening on staging, but it is on prod. It will allow you to quite quickly rule out if it's a database issue or a code issue or if it's an infra issue. After that, definitely multiple instances. The more instances that you can have and work against, the more streams of work and the more you can collaborate in between your team. If you make it non-tech focused after this, you can then pass the responsibility of creating and testing instances off to other areas of the team. This then frees up more developer resource, reducing the need to do monotonous tasks repeatedly over and over again and that was it i know it's slightly short but i hope you enjoyed it thank you adam thank you very much uh, you were super timely and everything doing very well thanks we do have a feedback from our um participants uh, guys in case you have any questions please please feel free to write them in the chat section, and uh, Adam will be happy to answer them. Or maybe there was some of the parts in presentations that you would like to Adam to make an emphasis on. The presentation was super clear. Do you see some kind of automation to pull DB dumps in production? Yes. Yeah, so. Um... The one we use is uh, the one we've developed, but it effectively pulls sanitized or non-sanitized backups of our choosing and pulls them from production. There's a module that you can install that allows you to run sanitized or non-sanitized because I know sanitized backups aren't part of community Magento. Thank you. Guys, have you tried Mage, Mage DBM too? HDBM2. Name me two seconds. Name yes, the, Denise has shared uh, the, the GitHub link. Database backup manager. I haven't tried that uh, just purely because I don't have the need for it. Um, it looks like it um, allows you to configure database backups. But no, I haven't used that. Apologies. I guess you can have an interesting thing to try. <laughs> after yeah, definitely. definitely. something to look at. <laughs> we win situation, you know. Uh, also, I lost the book from AWS. Thank yeah, you. no, that's, that's good. Yeah, they just usually sit in uh, RRDA, which is backed by AWS, so a very similar concept, I think. Right. Thank you for cool. the questions, though. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Guys, any questions? Yeah, we still have some time. We can use it to ask Adam to share more of his knowledge. 
seems like you were super clear, Adam. This is a compliment to, to you. <laughs> Thank you very much yeah. for an interesting talk. Uh, guys, in case you do have questions and you would like to, to chat with Adam in person, please feel free to reach out to him at our ne networking session, writing him in private, finding him in social media, and getting in contact to make sure you can exchange your experience with each other. Adam, thank you very much for your interesting and fruitful presentation. Thank you for being a speaker at MatchCon. Now we have now even a little bit longer break. We can have some time to chat and to go and network. Please make sure you go and visit the Axel Boots for our sponsors and you learn more about the opportunities they are providing to the uh, to the developers and to everyone who joins their, their rooms. And uh, yeah, enjoy the conference. We still have two more talks coming up and the longer networking session at the end. Thank you, Adam. Thank you everyone for joining. See you at the next session. Thanks very much. Thank you.